Why hello there YouTube. Welcome to Veda Day 6 where we're asked to read a passage from a book. I don't know what was our favorite book, but it said read a passage from a book and tell it's why it's your favorite. Something along those lines. So, I was like, hmm, what kind of book could I give to YouTube in order for them to appreciate what kind of books I read in my collection? Then I looked at my collection and I had some problems figuring out how to get a book that wasn't a comic. Don't believe me? Allow me to demonstrate. I present to you the hot mess that is my bookshelf. Observe numerous series of which I've collected over the years, but have scaled down to only a few. Largely because there's only so much room in the house, and yes. The full run of John Constantine Hellblazer, and Scalped, and 100 Bullets. And powers of which I wish they would make more. The complete infinite kung fu, lots of Hellboy and BPRD. Gotham Central, Hitman, Lock and Key, Fables, Jack of Fable. Now, if I were to pick a book that was a comic, it would be Scott McCloud, Understanding Comics, which basically goes over the entire story of what comics are all about, why people read them, and what makes them interesting. Ooh, Scott McCloud. But anyway, so I chose not to go the comics route. And I started going through my collection of books. I'm like, what book works for this exercise? And I picked up stuff like Maddox's The Alphabet of Manliness, but <laughs> I'm not going to read this book out loud. It's really cool, and there's lots of cool stuff in it, but I don't know. No. You look into that one if you want to know why I'm not going to read it. And then in order to uh, speak to my interracial relationship that I've blissfully entered into in marriage, I thought I would read uh, The Definitive Guide to Stuff White People Like, but... <laughs> Also hilarious, but maybe slightly inappropriate for Veda at this moment because you guys don't know me well enough yet. <laughs> so moving on. Next up, I was like, hmm, how about I read one of the books that has defined the way I dress when I'm out and about and, you know, you usually see me in my scrubbiest of attire, which, you know, in my opinion still looks okay because I keep it in good condition. But uh, there's the details, men's style manual you'll probably be boring as heck to read on a video, so why would I do that to you? So then I had another thought. One of my favorite series of stories is Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy series. Uh, a quintet of books, I guess originally it was meant to be a quartet and then he just threw a fifth book in there. I haven't read why he did it. But um, you can tell a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fan when you send out random references to things like Dolphins, 42, and other such amazing things. So, it doesn't appear until the first chapter of the second book, um, which is called The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, but the first chapter of that book, I think, helps to describe a lot of what Douglas Adams is going for, and, uh, you know, really help to set the tone of his sense of humor and approach to storytelling. So, Allow me to read it for you. The story so far. In the beginning, the universe was created. This has made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Many races believe that it was created by some sort of god, though the Javartid people of Viltwotl 6 believe that the entire universe was in fact sneezed out of the nose of a being called the Great Green Arkle Seizure. The Javartids who live in perpetual fear of the time they call the coming of the Great White Handkerchief, are small blue creatures with more than 50 arms each, who are therefore unique in being the only race in history to have invented the aerosol deodorant before the wheel. However, the Great Green Aqua Seizure Theory is not widely accepted outside Vitvoldal 6, and so, the universe being the puzzling place it is, other explanations are constantly being sought. For instance, a race of hyper-intelligent pan-dimensional beings once built themselves a gigantic supercomputer called Deep Thought to calculate once and for all the question of the ultimate answer of life, the universe, and everything. For seven and a half million years, Deep Thought computed and calculated, and in the end announced that the answer was in fact 42, and so another, even bigger computer had to be built to find out what the actual question was. And this computer, which was called the Earth, was so large that it was frequently mistaken for a planet, especially by the strange ape-like beings who roamed its surface, totally unaware that they were simply part of a giant 
computer program. And this is very odd because without that fairly simple and obvious piece of knowledge, nothing that ever happened on the Earth could possibly make the slightest bit of sense. Sadly, however, just before the critical moment of readout, the Earth was unexpectedly demolished by the Vogons to make way, so they claimed, for a new hyperspace bypass, and so all hope of discovering a meaning for life was lost forever. Or so it would seem. So, um, what I guess, <laughs> what I'm trying to, uh, capture with that is that, you know what, it's, it's one of my favorite series because it takes everything we think of in sci-fi and storytelling, turns it on its head, and it's just like, hey, guess what? This is how we're going to roll with this. We're just going to basically take all these crazy theories, pop into a book, make it funny as hell, and sell like a gazillion copies. Thanks, Douglas Adams. It's really great, and I will reread that series over and over again for life, and will train my child to read it by the age of three. Yeah, Cat in the Hat? Nah, man. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Represent. Alright, guys. See you tomorrow for day seven. Peace.